Giles, um, okay, uh, my name is Giles Peterson. Actually, that's the incorrect name. My name is Gilles Peterson, but no one knows that. Well, they do now, but I mean, anyway, Giles, because I was kind of brought up in London, and people don't really get this sort of double L thing. Until there was a famous footballer called Gilles Grimondi, and then they started kind of knowing. And there was a racing driver called Gilles Villeneuve as well, just uh, it was the Gilles tradition. But my name is Giles Peterson, or Gilles Peterson, and I'm a DJ, and I'm 43 years old. I started off um, at the age of 15 on pirate radio with a couple of turntables mixing, and I'm still doing it, so it's great. <laughs> Unlikely sources of inspiration. I mean, for me, you know, it's a combination of um, what I do, really. It's, it's a combination of very much meeting people and, and of all ages and of all cultures. And uh, I think that being a little bit sort of European mix myself, because my father was Swiss, my mother was French, I was brought up in London, I was always a little bit different in that sense to all my kids around where I lived. So I think all that time in my life, I've always sort of been searching for different people from different spots. And so this job that I do is perfect for that in a way, because I travel around the world. And, and the other real big source of inspiration for me is is, 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 is is the old generation of musicians, you know. That's so important to me, and that's a very important part of, you know, what drives me along and what I get a lot of excitement from as a, as a sort of, you know, what the role that I have, you know. To be able to hang out with people like Steve Reed or Aieto or, you know, um, Roy Ayers or whoever, it's a really important balance for me, you know. On one hand, it's those people and seeing the life they've lived and how hard they've had it, you know. It's so different to sort of, you know, when you're with someone like Roy Ayers, or Steve Reed, who used to do two gigs a day, you know, six, seven nights a week, and us and getting paid not a lot, and then us DJs, we can't, we start moaning if we have to play for more, to, more than two hours, and we haven't got like what a Don Perignon waiting for us, you know what I mean? So you know, that's an important balance for me, just to kind of sort of, you know, that always keeps me, you know, reminds me of um, of my roots really, and you know where I'm into, you know, what, what I'm about. I, you know what, I don't really know what people expect of me, what my signature style is really. I think it's kind of changed. I think that, uh, um, wow, I mean, you know, after 30 years in the business, um, I can still get away with playing what the hell I want, you know, and I think there's very few DJs who can get away with that. And uh, I don't know whether that's because I'm good at what I do or whether it's because I've just been doing it for so long that people let me get away with it. I don't know, it's really weird. I mean, I think that, because I like to rock a party and I like to be able to, it's funny, I was talking to Francois Kavorkian yesterday and uh, we were having this discussion about DJing because we both travel a lot and do the big festivals and the big clubs around the world. And even at his age, and he's a little bit older than me, he still has those doubts about, you know, how he got on and, oh, how's he going to deal with this crowd or that crowd? And he's still, you know, so we were having this discussion about all of that. And, um, and from my point of view, in a way, sometimes I'll do a gig and I'll think when I come off stage, I was really good tonight. You know, I mixed really well, um, the crowd peaked at the right time and I was getting my clapping and, and, and the vibes was great. And then I come off stage and no one's really saying anything. I'm like, oh, OK. And, and, and then I'll do a gig the next day. And I'll think I'm crap. I'll think I'm rubbish, you know. The mixes ain't going right. I couldn't think of the record to play next. It was a last minute switch. It was like, it went a bit weird, blah, blah, blah. And then after people are like, yeah, man, that was really wicked gig. You know, that was like, man, that was the jazz equivalent. That was like the disc dance equivalent of like a Charles Mingus bass solo or something. I'm like, wow, really? Is that how you're seeing it? So in a way, I think that's where my reputation comes up. It allows me to be rubbish. And but for people to think I'm actually being arty, you know, or being kind of out, you know, and they kind of, you know, I can get away with being bad, which is amazing. Um, so um, I'm just milking that one until I can. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think first of all with my kind of career I mean you know obviously I'm totally um, every day I wake up and I'm like god I've still got the best job in the world and uh, and I still really appreciate that you know and uh, and in a way the reason I think I've sort of survived in this game is because I've had sort of three different sort of main parts of my career. One of them has been running record labels, 
One of them has been being a kind of club DJ, and one of them has been a radio DJ. And depending on whichever part of my life, certain bits have been more important than others. There was a big period of my life when running a record label, um, i.e. Talking Loud particularly, was something that probably took up 70% of my time. Even though I was still DJing five times a week and doing four radio shows, the big thing for me then was doing the record label because it was a big responsibility. And probably now the record label is maybe down to sort of 20% running Brownswood. Not that I don't care, it's just the fact that, you know, you just have to survive and see what you can get, you know, how you can live from, you know. And so being a club DJ has become a big, quite an important thing. Being a radio DJ has always been very important since I was on Radio 1, which has been 10 years now, working for the BBC. That was a great sort of uh, achievement for personal for me, you know, having started with my pirate radio studio in the Garden Shed broadcasting to three people in South London to actually getting onto Radio 1 and the most important station definitely in the UK and full of history so that to me has been really important and so obviously that's taken up a lot of time so those three aspects have been very important and then in between those aspects there's always been there's been the family thing which is kind of very dear to me um, there's been obviously um, there's been um, producing a little bit and of course another thing that came through quite strongly for me in the last sort of 10 15 years has been doing mix albums you know I never realized I'd have got to the stage where I'd done like 50 plus albums in my career so I tend to put out three or four a year and I suppose those are the things that I take quite um, you know th those are the things that need the most planning in a way I mean like if you look talk to me about a radio show I mean there'll be days that because I'm doing so many things I'm getting music given to me at gigs on line I'm going to record shops you know it's kind of like and my my life is constant it, it doesn't the music thing is, you know, I'm on the radio every week, so I can never really um, lie down and just chill out and not listen to music for a month. It's just a constant thing. So in a way, a lot of what I do is instinct rather than prepared. Um, sometimes I prepare because I feel that maybe I'm a little bit dropping out or I haven't been you know, as focused enough. But generally, I'd say 90% of the time, whether I'm doing a DJ set or whether I'm doing a radio show, it's something that is actually an instinct thing. And what I mean by that is that I'm not at home all day long working out, that's going to go on after that and I'm going to then play a little bit of this and mix it into that. I just don't do that. I mean, unless I'm nervous about something, unless something's really important. And funnily enough, if I do prepare it, it tends not to be that good. You know, because it's kind of, I'm that guy, I'm sort of jazz in that respect. And it can be a disaster and it can be tragic, but equally it can be quite magical and it can be really good. And so I think that that's been my formula for years. And it's a lazy formula on one hand because it means that you can kind of just say, I don't need to do that. And that means I can go and watch a football match instead or chill out and do something else. But fundamentally, that's how I've done it. And the only thing I really prepare, and I think it's important to do that sometimes, is the more the mix records or if I'm in the studio with a band or obviously from a record label point of view, then you are kind of preparing and you've got a whole plan. I mean, the other reason I love doing a record label is because actually you're not the focal point. You know, you're not being interviewed. You're not the person who's actually on stage. You're the person on the side. And I like that role. I've always liked that role of basically being kind of an advisor and somebody who's more of a manager for the up and coming artists and the musicians. I do love having a photograph in front of, you know, having, having you know, being in this situation and, and being the DJ and being the headline. I like that, you know, that's nice, but not all the time, you know, and that's a kind of balance for me. And I've always just about worked it out. I mean, I'm a Libran, you know, so, you know, you're constantly searching for the, for the right balance, I suppose. When it comes to how you can affect an audience as a DJ, I mean, I'm still coming back for, I'm still, go, I don't, I, I'm quite simple. You know, when people go to clubs, they want to have a good time, they want to meet a girl or a boy, and it's as simple as that. That's basically, let's never forget that, you know what I mean? And uh, if I can make them, you know, want to go and buy a Giles Peterson mix album the next day, all, all well and good. <laughs>